Hey guys, welcome to part two of the Jeweler's Lathe video, where I'm going to put the headstock together. Just thought I'd take a few seconds to update you on some other projects. Um, CNC lathe is going along well. I had some runaway electricity on the circuit board for the tool changer, so I have to replace that. Um, put some clear path motors on the 3D printer, and that initially is sounding really awesome, so hopefully I can get that wired up pretty quickly. And uh, I'm staying busy with the Jeweler's Lathe, so enjoy the video. All right, so here's the uh, the project for part two of the video. We're going to make three main parts. The first one uh, is going to be sort of a, a cap that'll hold the spindle in place on the headstock. And the second two parts are going to be sort of the head headstock ribs, if you will. They're going to be connected in a couple of different places that you can't really see yet, but obviously you will later on. And the last part is going to be this controls panel, which uh, I'm probably not going to machine. I think I'm just going to laser cut it. And uh, that's just because it's probably going to change quite a bit, depending on what controls I decide to use in the end. A couple things to look out for. I don't know who designed this thing, but if we isolate this part, you can see there's a sharp edge here. That's obviously not ideal, um, because if you can imagine if you actually machine that, that's just going to turn out to be a burr. But uh, I'm sort of going to file it smooth, and I think it'll be okay. Uh, typically, I'd want a little bit of a flat there, but I just ran out of space. A um, few other things, I've got these 45 degree holes coming in from the side, if you want to see that section. Just uh, show that there. So you can see we're a little tight for real estate. Um, and the reason I've got those there is to hold on some, uh, some splash guards. Ultimately it's a fairly straightforward part. This is very much a part I'd be comfortable making on a manual machine. I just happened to use the Tormac because it was faster and I want to get a video out sooner. Um, if I was doing this manual, I'd probably do this area with a boring head. Yeah, I've done that before with a fly cutter, and it's fairly straightforward as well. Um, these holes are for manual machining only, really. I didn't really need them in my assembly, but uh, in my last lathe, I used them as uh, sort of built-in sign bars and to keep everything aligned. So these would be reamed half-inch holes, and you could use those for alignment pins and things. It actually works really well. This is kind of a back plate. This is like <laughs> sort of the my least favorite part of uh, headstock assemblies because I still haven't really got a go-to design I'm happy with yet. Um, this is more or less uh, a component that locates the motor with respect to the spindle. You can see I've got these sort of sign bar things built in again. Um, I've got two different hole patterns. So I've got a NEMA 23 hole pattern and I've got a sim motor hole pattern, which I'll get into later. And that's just based on my calculations, um, not my power calculations, my cost calculations that uh, led me into doing that. Um, you can see I don't have any chamfers on these edges here, but you're going to want to chamfer these edges because um, they'll be what contacts first. And uh, if it's too small, you can kind of buy yourself a little bit of space by chamfering these. Um, all in all, other than that, that's another part I'd be reasonably comfortable doing on a manual machine. Uh, this pocket might be a little difficult, but certainly doable. I uh, use a boring head for this. Don't know if I would do an actual circle to fit the outside of the motor here. I think I might just do an oversized square to accommodate everything, but fairly straightforward. I did this on the tarmac again, so it was really easy. Um, and got some counter bores in the back here. This is the last part. That is worth mentioning. Um, so it's kind of an awkward part to hold on to. I ended up actually using a face mill to cut this bore, and I did that on the Tormac. Again, you could do this on manual machines. You could either set it up on a face plate and bore it, uh, like on a lathe, or you could even do it on a manual mill with a boring head. Up to you. Um, a couple other things. These counter bores are terrifyingly close. So it's a M6 counter bore, so it's an 11 millimeter diameter. All I had was, I think it was 7 sixteenths or something, which is 11.3, something in that ballpark. And it got really close to breaking through on these. Um, I think it'll be totally fine, but certainly, uh, certainly kind of sketchy. And uh, finally, I've got the uh, this blind hole here that's going to be for sort of a, uh, a splash guard again, but we'll get to that later. Um, and yep, yeah, that's uh, sort of a third fairly straightforward part.
often use little pieces of wood to deeper really sharp edges like this. I was sort of inspired by getting burrs stuck in my fingers and then saying, oh, I should get the burrs stuck in something else. And uh, wood seems to work really well for that. Alright, now it's time to show off my artisanal soaps wrapped in this brown paper. First thing you do as soon as you finish the part, put it on Instagram. Second thing you do, wrap it in brown paper so it doesn't get all scratched up. So the first thing we're going to do to put this bad boy together is to screw the potentiometer into the front panel. So the potentiometer I have just came with the speed controller I got. I'll go into it later uh, in the sort of motor selection video, but uh, yeah, it's just a matter of screwing it through the hole like that. Um, I mentioned before that I laser cut the control panel, and that's just because, like I said, I don't know how it's going to change. And uh, I think when I do it for reals, I'm going to do it in, uh, in brass or something nice. So I seem to recall some smartass on my Instagram said something about using more fasteners in the spindle, so I thought I'd make up for it in this by uh, using lots and lots of fasteners on the control panel. These are all just button head fasteners because I think they look nice and finished, but it doesn't really matter. The spindle is the most important locating feature in this assembly, so I leave everything kind of loose so I can put the spindle in place and make sure everything lines up properly before snugging everything down. Alright, so here's the finished headstock. Uh, I mean, mostly finished. I still have to redo the uh, control panel, and of course I'm going to anodize this whole thing black. Um, this hole I mentioned earlier is going to have a cover on it like this, that is going to sort of cover the spindle while it's running. Uh, it's a lot like safety guards on regular lathes. Um, like I said, I'm thinking of brass probably for the control panel, but I haven't decided yet. Maybe even a nice wood. I don't know. Um, and... Not sure about work holding yet, and I'm, I've am i ordered the motor I'm going to use already, so that should be arriving next week, and I'll probably do a video on that. Cheers!